Hi everybody, Dr. Chris Heimlich, DC here. How would you like to increase your memory 1,800%? Now I'm sure you know this ad for products that claim to enhance mental performance. And after hearing all the research and the hype, I always try and ask myself, why is that working? What's the underlying mechanism? I mean, you can take 20 or 30 different nutrients to increase the uh, function of the brain, and each of one of them has a different rationale. Well, let's consider something different. Let's consider the principles that promote brain power rather than a specific take this magic product approach. Now we know contrary to what the earlier understandings were is that the brain, parts of the brain, can regenerate through a process called neurogenesis. And to stimulate and control that neurogenesis there are certain chemicals, they're called neurotropins. Those guys have to be present and they're involved with the uh, process. And one of the most important and exciting factors of those are something called BDNF. Stands for Brain Derived uh, Neurotropic Factor. Now BDNF is an essential key player in creating neurons and protecting those old ones. So some of the factors that are involved in turning on the BDNF are voluntary exercise, caloric restriction, and an electrical stimulation. And I say voluntary exercise because lab animals that were stressed and forced to exercise they didn't have the same benefit as those who could exercise at will. Now Dr. Lautenschlager of the University of Western Australia he found that elderly individuals who exercised the equivalent of 20 minutes a day for 24 weeks showed an 1,800 percent increase in the memory, attention, and other cognitive functions. Now one reason exercise may be so important is that you can find that BDNF, you can find that in skeletal muscles too. And it appears that as the levels in the muscle increase, it also increases those BDNF levels in the brain. Now let's consider caloric restriction. I mean, more and more reports are coming out and studies that show that the benefits of decreasing the amount of calories that we're eating. I mean, the average American consumes 500 more calories now than they did back in 1970. So reducing calories from estimated 3,700 to 2,000 for women, 2,500 for men, uh, it, it's not a huge discomfort. And it's best to think of food more like a pharmacological compound that affects the brain. Another interesting note is that BDNF levels are low in people with type 2 diabetes and also who are obese. Now, just as exercise can increase BDNF in the muscles, mental exercises can also increase the BDNF in the brain. Um, things like increased, uh, it is increased with problem solving, intellectual stimulation, and according to another neurologist, uh, Dr. Permletter, even meditation. And of course, it comes to no surprise that stress is one of the major factors which negatively impacts the brain health. Now, we can stress, uh, break stress into four different categories. You've got inflammation, stress, oxidative stress, uh, toxic stress, external internal ones, uh, and of course emotional stress. And each of these guys, they kind of feed upon each other and, and, and magnify the other one and intensify it. And most of you know the factors that lead to inflammatory stress, you know, hydrogenated or trans fats, you've heard of those, elevated homocysteine levels, food allergies, diets high in refined carbohydrates and uh, um, processed foods, uh, that's just a few. Uh, oxidative stress. Now that's a natural occurring thing in life, but it's, but it's also accelerated by depleted natural antioxidants. Heavy metals, iron, copper, stuff like that. So toxic stress or environmental stress comes from the pesticides, the herbicides, the uh, flavor enhancers, the artificial coloring, and all that other stuff you get in our food chain. I mean, then you figure in emotional stress, and we've got an equation for a compromised brain power. Now remember, it takes energy to deal with these stresses. And when our energy supplies are depleted, the effects of the stress accumulate and then cells begin to misfunction and don't have their optimal firing rates. Now cellular repair mechanisms need energy to rebuild as well. So to repair and produce those healthy cells. Do you know that more than two thirds of the dry weight of the human brain is fat and a quarter of that is DHA? So both EPA and DHA are beneficial to promote healthy brain plasticity between synapses of the brain cells. And it may be oversimplified a little bit, but 
we actually reap numerous benefits by just practicing these core principles. More specifically, I'm talking about the things that we just talked about. Voluntary exercise, caloric reduction, and intellectual stimulation as a key components to our optimal health. I'm Dr. Heimlich. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed this.